Good morning. I'm Fred Schaefer from the Indoor Football League. We're talking with Coach Clint Dalzell from the Frisco Fighters. First of all, how's your team handling the postponement of the uh, season? And matter of fact, the postponement of sports in general across the United States. I imagine like everybody else, we're obviously disappointed in, uh, you know, the season being shut down like it was uh, in the first week. I guess about Thursday, our first game was supposed to be on Thursday a week ago. So uh, disappointed with that, but it is what it is. The world's in the same crisis and uh, we're trying to adjust as best we can. You know, we've, we've got some players still in town and we're using them, you know, for the public as much as possible for food drives, things like that. Uh, and we sent out 13 guys yesterday. I think that's about what we have left here. A lot of them went back home. So uh, understandable. Yeah, I was going to say that leads me to my next question. Uh, they seem to be, you know, in, encouraging folks when they're going out and, and meeting with the public and helping them out. How are they reacting to it? Uh, well, I mean, shoot, they're, they're, they're glad to get any help uh, they can get. You know, even the re local restaurants that are just drive through, they appreciate, you know, us coming through and, you know, and keeping their business alive, which is, you know, a big part of it. You know, you're a lot of your local uh, you know, people get hurt from from all this, and oh yeah, I'm only on that too. Uh, so we're doing our part uh, as much as we can without you know putting anybody's uh, lives at risk. You know, obviously we're we're being safe. You know, gloved up, masked up, those type things, and just trying to do our part. That's good. That's good. Now, what are you and your coaching staff doing during this? Well, I'll call it downtime. Well, I mean, we're we're you know we were a little behind anyway, uh, honestly. So we're we're trying to catch back up. Uh, we, we were obviously disappointed. We wanted to play that first game to see what we actually got. You know, we got a whole new coaching staff for the most part to the IFL. Um, I'm I think I'm the only one um, that's actually you know coached in it in 2010. But man, has the game changed since then? Uh, there's so much better coaching, the better players, better talent. So um, we're just trying to. Trying to wade our way through it, just like everyone else, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say you, we keep talking about the, the 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 game. We were all set and re and ready to play that Thursday night. Give me some of your your feelings about that. I mean, leading up to that day, we were all prepared to play, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Yeah, anxious, the anxiety, kind of like of a player, you know, back in it's something new for me. I've been, you know, been doing the the AFL thing for so long. It was just old hat to me. You know, I was just. I had my routine, I did them, and that's kind of what we did, you know, going into every game. But, you know, with the IFL, there's so many different uh, things that are available for coaches and players to do uh, as far as scheming. Uh, the offensive side is, is totally different with two guys in motion in the AFL. Um, you know, when the running backs are not, you know, 300 pounders, they're real <laughs> running backs. So, you know, the adjustment of that, um, I, I felt pretty good about what we had going into the game. But, again, you just don't know until you get out there. Uh, we know we're going to play a talented team in Duke City that week one, and um, we were looking forward to it. No, that's good. Yeah, I was going to say, you had a really short time to get these guys prepared. Were there any standouts in, in camp that you were, um, I mean, looking forward to for the season? Yeah, I mean, we think so. Again, we're going against each other. We felt like we did a pretty good job, honestly, uh, with recruiting as late as we, you know, got into it. You know, we had a chance to fill our 40-man roster, and we didn't do it till the last couple of days before camp started. So we had a few guys not, you know, not show up from the long trek and around, and, you know, the finances didn't, didn't meet what they had going on. Personal lives got in the way, which is understandable, too. Um, but yeah, we had, uh, Claudia Matthew, uh, we, we feel like it's going to be a very good player defensive end for us. Um, I was anxious to see what he was going to do against other talent. Um, uh, shoot, our receiving core, we feel is very, very exciting. Uh, you know, they're very dynamic out there. Uh, Cavante Turpin from uh, TCU, a name that around Texas, everybody knows. Um, another guy they don't know, uh, Bruce, uh, Sam Bruce is going to be a weapon that we can use him the right way in different, uh, different aspects of the offense. I think he's going to be a, obviously very dangerous. And then our quarterback <clears throat> is one of our few guys with experience. Um, Jonathan Bain, quarterback in several different leagues, actually played quarterback in the IFL as well, the AFL, uh, the NAL. So a guy with experience, and as you know, in this the indoor game, you need a quarterback that can pull the trigger, and we feel like we have one in Jonathan Bain. That's good. Now, you, uh, we keep touching back and forth about AFL and IFL. 
illustrate some of the, the, the differences between the two and how you've been able to uh, implement some of those in your, in your coaching approach for the IFL? Well, on the offensive side, um, I mentioned the, the two guys in motion where in the AFL there's only one guy in motion. So that wasn't that big of a deal. Like I said, I've done this before in 2010. So it's just a matter of adjusting your, your, your uh, route tree for two guys in motion. You know, it's just more of who's going to lead the motion. You know, you have two guys trying to run and hit the line of scrimmage at the same time. So that can be difficult at times. But we figured that out pretty fast. And Coach Rodabaugh, uh, my offensive coordinator, has been my quarterback for the last uh, nine years um, in, in, the, in Philadelphia. So we figured that out pretty fast. He's done a great job of taking that over. I'm excited to see him out there. He was too. He was really geeked up about getting out there. And, again, the, the running back – is a true running back. So we're, you, know, you can run the zone reads, you run shotgun. You don't see any of that in the AFL just because of that defensive linebacker in the AFL. Has to, he's right on the line of scrimmage almost. He's right behind the, the butt of the nose guard in the A-gaps. And so with him being right there, it's really hard to be in shotgun because they can get up on you so fast. But that's one of the rules on the defensive side or the Mac linebacker, we call him Mac, the bigger linebacker that rushes, he has to start five yards back. So that's why you see, you know, the adjustment of the zone reads, a little more rushing quarterback type styles in this league versus the AFL because pure passing for the most part in the AFL, IFL, you get a mixture of both, which is what the world's going to. <laughs> Even the NFL is, you know, you see a lot of great college quarterbacks now you know, it's translating into the NFL and college coaches are translating into the NFL and you're starting to see those dynamic offenses like you see in college being run the, uh, the NFL. So very suitable for fans to understand and follow. Uh, you can see players, they fall in college, jump right into the IFL and, and fit right in and do exactly what they were doing out there. So, you know, and again, on that defensive side, that Mac linebacker, uh, the Jack linebacker, which is, uh, you know, we call him in the AFL, He's more of a uh, strong safety type player now. He can be anywhere. He's kind of your enforcer also for the run, but also putting hands on motion for us he is anyway. I'm sure a lot of teams do it different. Um, but he can be out in coverage. So you can play a lot more, you know, zone coverages. Um, defensive ends can drop in coverage, which has never been allowed in the AFL. Nose guard can too. So a lot of different aspects that uh, takes getting used to, but yeah. I think it's great for the game. And obviously Good. special teams is different too. Uh, yeah. There's no nets at the other end. Uh, and like the AFL, you're, you're kicking and, you know, trying to kick it high and, you're, you know, your kicking team gets down there to chance to cover. But you see a lot of big returns. Uh, that week one, we got to watch both those games. And I think there were four touchdown returns just on, you know, special teams alone. So, again, uh, I think – in the indoor game, the AFL, all that special teams is a truly a third that you better work on or you'll get you will lose games because of it. So it's yep. very important. Absolutely. Well, now that you've had a chance to uh, kind of reset, anything that you think you might do different when we get this thing started back up? Um, I don't think so. I'm, I'm just going to watch as much film as I can. Uh, we, we've had the, you know, that luxury at least to be able to you know, watch your Arizonas, watch your Sioux Falls. You know, they've been doing it for a while now, and they're, they're both very good, obviously. So we're trying to model everything we do, you know, on the field and off the field too. Um, you know, Arizona's always done a good job with, with players, but uh, it's also off the field stuff they do that keeps their, their, uh, their, uh, their fans around. They're always out in the public, and we're trying to do that as well. We're trying to keep our, you know, our players' faces seen out there, our coaches' faces seen out there, and, and get the community involved, and that's a big part of what we're doing here. All right. Now I want you to look into your crystal ball. Give me a prediction. When we do start playing again, what do you expect from the Frisco Fighters? I expect us to be very competitive. Um, I really do. You know, yes, we are a new franchise, but, um, you know, the, the talent we did bring in, uh, we feel like it's right up there with everyone in the league. Um, my coaching staff that my owners allowed me to, to put around me is probably the best coaching staff I've ever had, and more of them. I've usually only had three coaches, uh, counting myself, you know, going into season. I've got five this year. So um, some local guys that were able to, to jump right in and help me out. So I'm excited. I, 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 
I really can't tell you. I couldn't give you a record, and that would just be just throwing numbers out there because <laughs> who knows? Um, and there's a lot of, like I said, great coaches and great talent in this league. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, everybody's got, not, not just us. All right, Coach. Well, appreciate your time today. Keep safe. Stay healthy. Keep everybody down there uh, safe and healthy, too. Will, will. Take care.